أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله In the name of Allah, the compassionate, the most merciful All praise is due to Allah and may his peace and blessings be upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam To all of our viewers out there, our brothers and sisters in Islam Our brothers and sisters who may not be of the Muslim faith Our brothers and sisters in humanity We begin by greeting you with the Muslim greetings Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu May the peace and blessings and the mercy of Allah be upon all of you And welcome back to this part of our program And we're very grateful that you are joining us Where we are going through some reflections of the Quran And in this particular one and the one before it We are doing some reflections upon the verses that contain Some of the characteristics and attributes of the Creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we are looking into the verse from Surah Al-Baqarah, that's Surah number 2, verse number 255, Ayat Al-Kursi. The verse of the Kursi, and we said that Kursi was either a pedestal or Kursi is a chair. And in it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduces himself by saying, Allahu la ilaha illahu. Allah, there is no one, no deity, no person, nothing that is worthy of worship besides him. Allahu la ilaha illahu. Al-Hayyul Qayyum He is the eternal, the living, and the self-subsistent Al-Qayyum Al-Qayyum may have a different translation also That means Al-Qayyum is the one who is in charge of the maintenance of anything out there That is why for example a person who is responsible of a school or anything like that May be called the Qayyum He is the manager, he is the one in charge of the affairs and the maintenance and the well-being of a special area. So as far as our world is concerned, the Qayyum, the one who is in charge of the betterment, facilitating for goodness of this world, is called Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is Al-Hayy, Al-Qayyum. لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم Neither slumber nor sleep seizes him. In other words, there is no deficiency in our Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not think about him in human terms. Do not think or apply the limitations of humans into the Creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm just reminded here of the term al hayy the living. Neither slumber nor sleep seizes him. One simple person, I mean simple in the estimation of people, used to say, at the end of every night, I take all my worries, all my anxieties and I cast it upon God because I know he is going to be up all night long so the fact that you know Allah our creator is not seized neither by slumber nor by sleep is that there is a source of comfort there point is that be comfortable rest assured Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ever in charge of the maintenance of the heavens and the earth so it says لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض and to him belongs or his is whatever is up in heaven and whatever is down on earth so stop to us human mind when we describe the big or, or how big a thing is we say it's as big as heavens it's as big as the earth but that's as far as we know so Allah is saying that that is just part of what he has this is just part of what his kingdom contains his dominion extends beyond this but to begin with his is what is in heaven and what is on earth all of that belongs to him subhanahu wa ta'ala lahu ma fi as-samawati wa ma fi al-ard ya'lamu ma bayna aydihim wa ma khalfahum he knows that which again depending on the way it is understood that which appears before them or that which they have done ya'lamu ma bayna aydihim what it is that they are committing at this time يَعْلَمُ مَا بَيْنَ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَمَا خَلْفَهُمْ What they have done in the past What they are engaged in And what they will do 
يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم. The knowledge of Allah is a knowledge of perfection. It is neither preceded by ignorance nor is it followed by forgetfulness. We humans, our knowledge is different. It is preceded by ignorance and it will certainly be followed by forgetfulness. Allah waits for things to happen to find out about them. He knows about them prior to them taking place. He knows about them. He's not making humans do the things that they are doing because there will be no sense of accountability. But rather Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his knowledge is so perfect that he does not wait for things to happen in order to know about them. يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء. And they do not, meaning humans, they do not encompass any part of his knowledge except what he wills to tell them. So we know what we know about Allah, we know what we know about the creation of Allah because Allah has permitted that. Allah has permitted for us to know this and that is min ilmihi. That is just a portion, a little of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen to share or to allow us this part of his knowledge. وَلَا يُحِيطُونَ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنْ عِلْمِهِ إِلَّا بِمَا شَاءٍ وَسِعَ كُرْسِيُّهُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ His kursi, he said that kursi is the chair. وَسِعَ كُرْسِيُّهُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ It could also mean throne, a place of sitting. It may mean power, it may mean knowledge, argument, whether this is metaphorical, whether it is literal. At any case, whatever it is, it extends by through the heaven and the earth. When we think that the heavens and the earth are the biggest thing, and here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that his knowledge, his power, his sovereignty extends to all of this. Nothing escapes the power or the knowledge or the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. None of that escapes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And no fatigue seizes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or befalls upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the process of maintaining the heavens and the earth. If you remember earlier, we said that in the Old Testament there is a reference to God taking a rest on the seventh day after he has created the heavens and the earth. And we said that it may be the case that this language is metaphorical, that the literal meaning of it is not meant. The Quran does not allow for such a thing. You do not speak about Allah in any way that can remotely suggest some sort of deficiencies in God, even in a metaphorical sense, that in the Quran is not acceptable. So Allah said, in the process of maintaining the heavens and the earth, no fatigue befalls upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لا يؤده حفظهما He takes care of it without that having an impact upon Allah, without requiring that Allah takes a rest. None of this happens. وَهُوَ الْعَلِيُّ الْعَظِيمُ He is the exalted, the awesome. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know in the hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us about the 99 beautiful names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is said that there are about 81 names that are mentioned in the Quran of the attributes and the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Actually, only of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah has more attributes than the names. So what happens is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps telling us about himself. Either by what he has done, such as Ayatul Kursi right now, it was a mixture of his names and his qualities and his actions in the world. Allahu la ilaha illahu. You know, the personal name that is given to him. Allah, al hayyul qayyum. He is the living and the self-subsisting. And remember that the names of Allah are his personal names and simultaneously they're also his attributes. In other words, my name is Karim, which in the Arabic language means generous. However, my name may be Karim, but in reality I am a very stingy person. I am very greedy. I am a very miserly person. So my name distinguishes who I am when we are in the number of people amongst people, or when somebody says that 
you know, we're talking about Kareem, so people know whom they're talking about. But it is not necessarily a reflection of what my name means. It is not a reflection of my character. It does not stand up for what my actions are going to be like. And as thus, the name sounds good, but to many people, it may be very hollow. Because my lifestyle does not reflect the name that I possess. So similarly, in the case of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his names are not just personal names. His names are his personal names are simultaneously, they're also his attributes. Otherwise, that becomes very whole. It becomes very meaningless. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives himself a name, it is not just the name, but rather it is the name and the attribute and the quality that is within that name. And then, Al-Hayyu Al-Qayyum, La ta'khuduhu sinatun wa la nawm, Neither sleep nor slumber, or nor slumber nor sleep, seizes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And like we have meant with the, or like we have said with the other attributes that we have been reflecting upon here in this beautiful verse of Ayat Al-Kursi. Inshallah, when we come back, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, inshallah, we are going to go to the following verse. And we have done the one before it, and now we're doing the one after it to see the consistency and the smooth transition of the Quranic style. So please do stay tuned with us, and we will be back shortly. Allah, 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 Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of Allah, the compassionate, the most merciful. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. May the peace and blessings and the mercy of Allah be upon all of you. Thank you for joining us back again here, doing our Quranic reflections. And in this particular one, we are about to conclude our reflections upon Ayat al-Kursi. If you remember last week or so, we spoke about the verse that came before Ayat al-Kursi, and now we are speaking about the verse that is coming after Ayat al-Kursi. What comes after Ayat al-Kursi is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا إكراه في الدين There shall be no compulsion in religion. People's relationship with Allah they cannot be forced into it. Any religion that is based on force, it fails to be a sound religion. Why is this? After all this description that was given about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if your relationship with Him is not based on your own free will, your own free genuine desire to have that relationship with Allah, then that is not meaningful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not compel people to believe. Otherwise, that would indicate a need. If we were compelled by Allah to believe, then that suggests a need on the part of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But rather, Allah clearly says that I am in no need of your worship. In fact, Allah is great as He is. Our worship of Him will not increase Him in greatness. If we decide not to worship Him, that will not diminish his greatness. So he is great as he is. And there is nothing that we can do or say to make him greater or to make him less great than what he is. And that is why one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what we discussed as Samad. And now we have one that is Al-Ghani, meaning that he is self-sufficient. He does not need us. We are in dire need of him. He is not dependent upon us and we are in complete dependence on Him. His existence and well-being is not contingent upon us, but rather ours is contingent upon Him. So Allah says that He is so free that this deen is about invitation. Some are going to accept the invitation. Those who do not accept the invitation, they will not be compelled to do so. They will not be compelled to do so. لا إكراه في الدين that our relationship with Allah cannot be based on compulsion. People cannot be coerced. They cannot be forced. They cannot be compelled into having a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That may be slavery. In slavery is you have the slave serving the master, but the master having a whip because he needs the service of the slave. Apparently, it looks like the slave is doing the will of his master, but inside, the slave has nothing but hatred, resentment, anger towards his master. This kind of relationship is not befitting. 
not within humans, let alone with our Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But rather sometimes, you like some people so much, that no matter how tired you are, no matter how busy you may be, no matter how you are enjoying your own things, when they ask you because of your love to them, you jump and you want to serve. Now that's just to draw some sort of a, similar, a, a glimpse of our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So our relationship with Allah must be based on genuine, unconditional, sincere, authentic love. And that is why it says, La ikrah fi din. I will not compel anyone to serve me. I will not compel anyone to worship me. I will not compel anyone to believe in me, even though everyone is utterly, desperately dependent on the help and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is facilitating for them. Despite all of this, Allah says, nobody is going to be compelled to worship me. So you Muslims, what you do is, you extend the invitation for others. If they accept, Alhamdulillah, praise be to Allah. If they don't, you have done your job. And that is why the notion that you know Islam was spread by the sword is so historically false. But also when we go to the scriptures of Islam, that is not, that is not the case. But then there is another point that the Quran explains. It says, قَدْ تَبَيَّنَ الرُّشْدُ مِنَ الْغَيْءِ That truth has been clearly distinguished from falsehood. When you compel people, it is as if truth does not have enough power to convince people. Truth does not have enough power to shine and invite people. So what you do is that you compel people to do so. But Allah said, wait a minute. That is not the case. قَدْ تَبَيَّنَ الرُّشْدُ مِنَ الْغَيْءِ Error has been clearly put on one side and rushed, righteousness, truth, they are on one side. And there is a clear distinction between these two. When you start compelling, you may be suggesting that there isn't enough power in truth for people to be convinced by it that we need to compel them to it. And that is not acceptable. So Allah says, قَدْ تَبَيَّنَ الرُّشْدُ مِنَ الْغَيْءِ but then there is another point. Allah out of His care and mercy, all the time, all the time, He is continuously showing truth and how powerful it is. It is not a one-time deal that truth was once made to be clearly distinguished from error and evil. No, no, no. But rather it is continuous. Allah Allah is the friend of those who believe يُخْرِجُهُمْ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النور. He takes them out of the darknesses into the light. And by the way, in the Quranic language, or the Quranic terminology, ظُلُمَات, darknesses, is always in the plural sense. It's always put in the plural form. However, light, it always comes in the singular. نور, because there is only one light. There are many darknesses, but there is only one light. So Allah continuously saves the believers from the darknesses into the light, into the nur. وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَوْلِيَاءُهُمُ الطَّاغُوتِ يُخْرِجُونُهُمْ مِنَ النُّورِ إِلَى الظُّلُمَاتِ As for those who choose to reject faith, their friends are the devil and his helpers, where they take them out of the light into the darknesses. So the point is, لَا إِكْرَاهَ فِي الدِّينِ Continuously, continuously, all the time, and consistently, truth is going to be clearly distinguished from wrong. Right and wrong, you know, in Islam, you know, there is not relativism, what is right and what is wrong to some may not be the case to others. You know, preference and taste may be what some people find beautiful, what some people prefer. Yeah, you can have relativism there. But when it comes to right and wrong, Truth and falsehood, there is no. It says, قَدْ تَبَيَّن You know, they've been manifested. They've been clearly distinguished. The line has been clearly drawn. قَدْ تَبَيَّنَ الرُّشْدُ مِنَ الْغَيْءِ لَا إِكْرَاهَ فِي الدِّينِ There shall be no compulsion in religion. So what happens is that when we look into Ayat al-Kursi, 
and we see what comes after it, we have told you about the attributes of Allah. These are the real attributes of any being that claims to be worthy of worship. He is eternal. He is self-subsisting. He does not need anyone. His work on this earth is clear. He is everlasting. He is al-hayy, the living. These are the absolute necessities of any being that claims that he deserves to be worshipped. Not that he compels people to do so, but these are the at least the minimum qualities that must be present in any being that ought to be worshipped. So because of these qualities, there shall be no compulsion in religion. La ikraha fi What do we do with the attributes of Allah? When we look into the attributes of Allah, at a human level, we try to perfect them. So for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes himself as being halim, sublime, or clement. So what happens is that at a human level, I try to do this. Allah describes himself as being kareem. He describes himself as being generous. So at a human level, I say, generosity is one of the qualities and attributes of Allah. I am going to have it in my own character as well. I am going to be generous to the best of my ability. However, by the end of the day, through the names and attributes of Allah, we are able to get to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala better. When we know Him better, that should have an impact on our relationship with Him. Now that I know Allah to be a Samir, He is the whole all hearing, I should be invited to continuously call upon Allah. When I know that Allah is generous, I shall be invited, I mean inviting myself all the time to ask of Him because He is generous. When I know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-Afu, He is the oft forgiven, Making a poor choice is not the end of the world to me. But rather I know him. He forgives and he loves to forgive. So I can continuously turn back to my creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I know him to be al-Basir. He sees everything. Sometimes I may be oppressed and nobody is helping. I know that Allah is not being absent from this. Allah knows what is happening. And Allah works on his own terms and on his own time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is fully aware of what is happening. Similarly, I know that Allah watches, so I will not do anything that will jeopardize my relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With this, we come to the conclusion of this part of our program. Very grateful that you have decided to share part of your day, and we're very grateful for this. And I'm really hoping that you are enjoying this as much as we are enjoying being with you. And until we meet next time, inshallah, we say so long. And السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.